everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Dad Homeschool Life. I'm Michael, and I homeschool. Two kids, two dogs, six chickens, some fish in the tank with some turtles. That's my life. Da -da 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 -da. I need some cool music in the background. Anyway, hey everybody. Sorry it's been so long since I've been here. We've had a crazy, 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 crazy week and a half or more. So, when my husband got home from work, we had to go to Arkansas because I had to have an MRI. I really need to do a video on that to keep you up to date or let y'all know why I say I have to go have all these tests for him and stuff. Anyway, I had to go have an MRI, then we came back home, and then my daughter's friend from Texas came to stay with us for about a week. And then she had um, jujitsu seminar, national seminar that was in a town two hours away from us. So... We had that Saturday and Sunday, and she did that, and it's just been busy. We've been crazy, but here it is Tuesday, and I think things are slowing down. No, I lie. We have swim lessons this week. Luckily, it's only from 9 to 10 in the morning, so it's not a big deal. It's only a week long, but I have that going on. So, and the kids aren't schooling this week. We're year-round homeschoolers, and they're not. we're not schooling this week. Which leads me to the topic of today's discussion. Game schooling. Dun, 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 dun. I need like game schooling to flash across the screen. Anyway, so those of you who are new to homeschooling know that if you Google either homeschool curriculum or types of homeschooling, you would have found hundreds of thousands of different curriculums or different methods or different ways. I'm gonna take my shoes off. They bother me whenever I sit like this. Um, or different ways to homeschool and one of those ways may have been sorry game schooling so what game schooling is it's basically using games to teach just like the name suggests um it's a really simple idea and it makes sense and i'll explain to you through a few of the games that i've picked that we have that we use um some people use it organically like the information um the information and skills are obtained just by playing the game and then some people choose games based on the topic they're studying. Say you want to study the United States, they may um, they may choose one of the Professor Noggin's um, U.S. Geography thing or World Geography game that you can get. Um, that may be something they choose. For us, game schooling, we do not solely use game schooling as our main curriculum. We do it on the days when we really just don't feel like doing school. We don't feel like opening a book. I do not feel like harassing the children. Okay, it's not really that bad. Um, but if the kids don't feel it or if I don't feel it, because I do have days like that, that I just don't feel like um, doing school. We also school four days a week, which is why we school year-round, because we only do four days a week. Um, so, like, on Fridays, instead of just letting the kids have a free-for-all and do whatever they want, we pull out a few games and we play a few different games. Simple as that. Um, some parents choose to use this as their sole curriculum and maybe supplement a few things here and there. It's just the way. Um, you do you. I was introduced to game schooling by listening to a podcast, and I cannot tell you what podcast it was because... It was last year, and I've slept and had brain surgery since then, so I don't remember a whole lot. No, not really. I just really don't remember. Anyway, um, a lady named Jessica Waldorf, I think that's her name. Let me pull her up on my computer over here. Um, Jessica Waldock came on and spoke about game schooling. Um, they, I think she's got one kid. Her and her husband have one child, and they homeschool their child, and they use game schooling. And I don't know if they use it as their sole curriculum but it's their curriculum is really really heavily based on game schooling and so i was introduced to this and once i learned about it and listened to her speak i i had to go get some games it made a lot of sense because when your kids are tired of just book work or reading or you know the the mundane if you traditional school there's a lot of workbook and busy work if you if you can traditionally homeschool, sorry, there's a lot of no workbook stuff. If you classically homeschool, you've got a lot of reading. Um, there's just, you know, the kids may just get bored. 
So this made perfect sense to me to still teach them something, but we're playing a game. Why not, right? So I came upon Miss Miss Jessica, and that's how I learned about this. So in this pod in this podcast, this isn't a podcast. <laughs> in this video, um, I kind of just wanted to tell you all what it was. I don't have a lot of knowledge. Um, there's a few websites that I've used to get games, get game ideas. Um, Jessica does a, is it on her Instagram page? The thing, she does the thing where she does Amazon hauls where she gets games and stuff. And I love, I love just watching that. But what I'm going to do for you. So what I'm going to do for you is in the description, I'm going to list the websites that I use. And then I'm going to list, um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Got eight games here that I want to show you, and I'm gonna list the links to them, which probably Amazon links. Um, you can get them wherever you want, but I probably bought mine from Amazon. Um, and I don't get any money for it. I'm not an affiliate, or it's not an affiliate link. I'm just simply sharing the wealth of the little bit of knowledge I have. So that's what game schooling is. You basically play games to learn. Kids. Most kids love games. There are some games that do not, some games, some kids that do not like games. Um, but a lot of kids do. And if you can't get them to do a workbook page or, you know, sing their ABCs or make their, their font, use their phonetics and stuff like that, then let's play games, right? So, um, My Little Poppies is a website that I use that's really cute. Um, The Waldock Way is another one that I use. And then Game School Academy. I'm going to link those, like I said, in the description. But that's what I've got. That's where, what I use. So, I'm going to start with some games that I've got and kind of tell you about them. And tell you why I think they're great. I'm going to get a drink of my, whatever I'm drinking. Water with, I think it's cranberry, blueberry, whatever, I don't know. Okay. I do wet my whistle. All right. So, the first game that I am going to show you is great for your little ones who are having to learn um, sight words. A lot of curriculums tell you to not to teach sight words because they need to know the phonetics. But some of the words are really difficult to teach. Like, I do not know how to teach the word the because none of the phonetics that I know and that... I've tried to learn from homeschooling. Tell me how to how to work the. So I don't remember what this game is called, but I'll find it and link it. But it's a a game where you you swap swap the word, swap the bug. So it comes with. Hold on, I still have the rubber bands on these. So it comes with these cards right here, and you've got like level three, level four. And you, they go from all the way to level level five so here's level one and it's got a and away big blue um different words so you'd find the matching the matching bugs and here are the matching bugs and you'll basically just throw these bugs on the floor and it's for up to four players and i would call out a word say i call out the word we'll just show this one two and they see two and whoever swats the bug first gets that point or collects that bug, however you want to look at it. So this is real fun to teach your kids their sight words. Um, Cause a lot of them are difficult. It's also, if you want to use it as a spelling game, you know, use one row a day to teach your kids how to spell. Um, you know, it starts level one, level five words get a little more difficult. Let me see if I can see. Um, always another around because, you know, I wouldn't say this is good for a fifth grader, but it's great for starting out. So maybe you could use it as a spelling game too, you know. Um, so that's one of the ones that we got. And I love it. And the kids love it. Even my um, 11-year-old, she'll play with her little brother. And it's fun because it's competition. And they cut up and swat the bugs. I mean, come on. We're killing bugs here. <laughs> uh, the next game is I've got is called Guess in 10. So this is my son's favorite game now the object of the game is to give each person like five tries the cards have and this comes in different this is guessing 10 things that go they have like geographical places and they have um 
wild animals and you know different things but anyway this one's things that go and i bought this one for my little guy because he'll he knows more about vehicles and stuff so you get a card like this and you're allowed to say certain things but you're not you can say the buzzwords and the facts and then they get to ask up to five questions and if they can't figure it out in five questions they can use a clue card and then you give them one of the clues right here but they only get five guesses if they get if they don't get it in five then or maybe it's ten because games guess in ten um if they don't get it in ten then they don't get the card we don't play it that way we just play it as my son will grab a card and he'll read to he'll look at the thing and it's got two wheels and it doesn't have an engine and it can go in the water and or can't go in the water you know different things like that and we're supposed to guess that's how he plays and that's how we play with him and it works for us it's easy enough so there's that one um this is a great one that we love for united states geography the scrambled states of um, the scrambled states of america game and it comes with a little book and basically you have so many cards and they're color coded and somebody reads something and a clue card and you have to say yell out what state it is like mississippi or you know whatever and it if you get the right kids to play it with you it's a lot of fun i played it with my daughter and two people it's fun but man if you could get more than two people if you can get the max four players that it says and you've got people competing it's a whole whole lot of fun but that one's great for geography and we've played that one a lot just like this guessing 10 game we've played it a lot some great math games that we like um there are two of them we have exact change which is just like it says it's teaching kids how to give the exact change or get the exact change back um imagine it like a sonic worker you go to sonic and you give them 20 and your bill was 1069 well they have to figure that out you know um, a lot of kids don't know how to count back this game is going to help this game is going to also teach them how to count out the correct change for instance this weekend um a friend of ours was here and she had to give some money and she got scared whenever it was time for her to check out well instead of counting the money she just handed the lady twenty dollars or whatever it was and so the cashier was nice enough and helped her you know get the right amount of money but this helps them not to freak out this is a great great game and then we've got perfect timing again if your kid is having trouble telling time um or understanding a quarter past half past and a quarter till this game is great um my oldest actually had a little difficulty learning how to tell time and understanding a quarter or half and then a quarter till but my youngest seemed to pick up on it faster which is totally weird and ironic but hey this game has helped it's a lot a lot of fun and it's great for teaching them or helping them tell them and when they're playing these two games they don't realize that they're learning they're games these are fun so they're learning while they're having fun um let's see spelling we'll do spelling before i go into these single people games spelling scrabble and this one's scrabble junior so this game we play and i got the junior version because i wanted my younger guy to start playing he started playing when he was about five so what it is is the board is two sides it's just like regular scrabble but the board's two sides one side is regular scrabble and you have to be able to spell words the other side has the words let's see if you can kind of see this picture see it's got the words for you and you play it pretty much just like regular scrabble except you match the words that are on the board you have to put them like that so it's really good to help spell upside down anyway it's good to help spell it's good to know your abc's too in a way you know if you're trying to teach abc's and you're teaching them how to use it when you know with spelling at the same time maybe you can include some phonetics with it like okay you're gonna put an a down what does a say a or what a okay so they've learned the long and the short short way of it you know you could incorporate it however you want it works so um this is a really fun game and we've played it a lot 
and we've only played on the junior side, like I said, because my youngest guy, he is six, so he doesn't know exactly how to spell things yet. So, that's where we are with this. All right, I've got two games that, well, one is a single person game and one is a cooperative game. Uh, for those of you that don't know what a cooperative game is, is you've got multiple players in a cooperative game, but there's no winner or loser. You have to work together to get to the answer. Now, this is a, or get to the end or whatever. This is a very simple game. There's not a lot of strategy in it, but race to the treasure. So you've got the little ogre right here and you've got to try to get to the treasure chest before the ogre does. And let's see. So you have these little card pieces right here. You have roads and then you have ogres and you shuffle them all together. And the dice tell you what place to put it. So like you roll the dice and you place the keys in the, the snacks. That's what these are for. After that, you're done. Then you just take turns and you draw a card. If you draw a road map, you put a road map down or a piece of the road down. If you draw an ogre, the ogres go over here. The ogre has a straight path. In order to unlock the, the treasure chest, you have to have three keys because there's three locks on it. So you try to make your paths go where the keys are to collect the keys, right? And whoever gets to the path first, either the team or the ogre, wins the treasure. So you work together to make your roads go the best way that they can to get the keys so you can unlock the treasure. It's a lot of fun. It's short. It doesn't take very long. You can play this probably five or six times before you're like, okay, we've had enough of it. It's fun. It's easy. And you work together. It's teamwork. All right. The last game is a logic game and it's a single player game it's called cat crimes it is a single player game and it's a logic game but my daughter and i play it together we team make a team together and we try to decide who committed the crime so what it is is you've got a table and you've got place settings around the table and you've got the cats well you just set the cats wherever you want them around the table initially but then you draw a card you have easy medium and difficult anyway and you read the clues on the card and it tells you like who swallowed the fish? So that's what you're trying to figure out. Ginger was sitting in front of the birdcage. So you place Ginger in front of the birdcage. Tomcat was sitting to Ginger's right. So then you place Tomcat. So you follow the clues on the card until you figure out who done the crime. And on the back of the card, I think it tells you who, done the, who did the crime or somewhere. Somewhere it tells you. I've got to figure that out. All right. I figured it out, but I don't know off the top of my head. Anyway, this is fun. We like playing this game. There's 40 different crimes in there. Beginner to ex expert. Um, this is fun. This one's a lot of fun. I would take this to my room and play it by myself. It's logic. It makes the brain work, right? These are just a few of the games we have. I have, I'll post a picture in here um, with it probably at the end of this. Um, of all the games we have, we have several we have lots and lots of games. These are just a few of our favorites. And we use these, like I said, on Fridays, on the days that we, or on the days we just don't feel like doing school. They're fun. They're easy. And the kids are still learning. So, guess what, Mom? You're not stressing out to teach that day. If you've got, say you've got an early morning doctor's appointment. You just don't feel like teaching. You know, it's just, let's just take the day off. But you still want them to learn? Grab a game. They're fun. The kids like them. And it's win-win. So, that's what I got today, you guys. So, like and subscribe or thumbs up or recommend me to somebody or whatever. Let's grow this page. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Love you two pieces. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button or whatever it is. And I will talk to you guys later. I'll link everything in the, bottom, in the description below. So, check it out. Bye, everybody.